How's it going everybody? My name is Nick from Hobby Extreme and this is Mark. Hey everyone. So today we have something very special. Uh, this is something that my dad has always wanted to get into, which was jet. So today we're going to talk to you about a Ranger and what it takes to get into it, what it takes to fly it, and everything about it. Let's do it. Nick's right, I've always wanted to get into actual turbine airplanes. Um, being a full-scale pilot myself, I've always found them fascinating. To actually have it uh, to be a real turbine, just miniaturized, was so exciting to me. So I started getting into uh, researching and looking at what it would take to actually get into a turbine. And I found out there's not a lot of info out there. You have to really kind of do it on your own. At this level of the hobby, there's a lot more involved that goes into it, especially at this price point. So I thought Nick and I would go ahead and put some videos together to show you what we learned, to show you how these actually fly, to show you what it actually takes to, to put one together. And uh, let's go flying today and see what it's like. we want to talk about is when you're getting into turbine aircraft it's not like any other RC flying you've ever done it requires a lot more thought it requires a larger and more comprehensive pre-flight and above all it requires a lot more skill so this is not something you're going to want to just jump into but if you're at that level where you can fly EDF which is the electric ducted fans and uh, you can fly 3d or you can fly sport aircraft without much of a problem and you're thinking about getting into it this is uh, this level is a big jump, but it's it's doable. Now let me talk about what we first do about uh, pre-flight the aircraft. We don't just look it over; we really look it over. We have to check to make sure that everything's secure in the aircraft itself. And Nick, if you actually take a look, you'll see that the uh, aircraft assembly is very very clean. This particular aircraft was actually built by Chris Barton with Full Throttle RC, and uh, it, it requires a lot of attention to detail. The electronics in a jet are slightly different as well. You have an electronic stabilization unit, um, which uh, we use the Aura Pro, which is by uh, Flex Innovations. Um, it's kind of one of those things where you set it and forget it. It will stabilize the aircraft at any speed, at any angle, um, and uh, we're using that in the jet today. You also have uh, several battery packs for redundancy. We have actually two flight packs here. They're 2800 milliamp, and uh, those are actually dual redundant for our receiver and servo setup. So although they do draw down both battery packs, if one does fail, the other actually will pick up without a hiccup, and it'll actually still be able to fly the model. The third battery we have is just for the turbine alone, and that's this pulse pack down here. That actually runs our GSU, it runs our turbine um, control unit, and uh, it gives us the, uh, the power we need to start the engine and uh, keep it running in flight. So there's a lot more involved with the electronics inside, but what about outside the aircraft? Well, we don't use generic servos. We are actually using uh, MTS servos all around. Some are slim profile, some are regular. We don't need a whole lot of torque in a jet aircraft, but we do need precision. So if, if Nick, if you can get onto that wing and show, I don't think you can see the servo, but I, what I want to show you is that with the servos powered up, we have very little to no flex at all. The resolution of these servos is top notch and it keeps it at a higher speed from fading out. One of the big advantages of flying a turbine aircraft is the actual power plant. This is not an electric EDF, this is an actual turbine aircraft. So uh, there are several things that we have to do and, and uh, there are several components that make up the actual turbine in this airplane. The first I want to point out is that the aircraft engine is actually controlled by a, uh, um, a GSU. 
which is uh, an onboard, basically FADAC type control for the engine itself. It knows when to introduce fuel, it knows when to uh, throttle up, it knows how much. It's always monitoring the EGT or the gas temperature um, and it knows exactly what the turbine is doing at all times. This is actually just to start the airplane. Once we start the airplane, we'll pull this control unit out and then we'll be able to read the telemetry on our radio itself. Next is we have what uh, most call a bubble trap and this is to stop any bubbles from actually entering the fuel system in the actual turbine. Turbines are very, very sensitive to bubbles. If they get any type of air at all, they will flame out instantly. So we have a bubble trap that draws the fuel from our main tank into the bubble trap and then into the pump itself. If there's any uh, air in that, it's going to flame out our system, so we make sure that that is as full as possible. The next component we have is the actual pump. Believe it or not, this is what regulates the RPM in the turbine. The voltage is regulated to this pump, which makes it pump faster or slower, giving us more or less pressure. Turbines require a lot of pressure in the fuel system to atomize the actual fuel. So there's nozzles all around the burner can, and the first stage burns kind of raw fuel, but the second stage is really higher pressure atomized fuel, so we get a better burn around the can. That pump ensures that we get that pressure adequate to atomize that fuel and get a complete constant burn in the can itself. That pump is crucial in this system. The pump goes out, the bubble trap goes out, we get the air in the system, all of it leads to a flame out. So it uh, requires a, a much more significant pre-flight to make sure that all that is going to work prior to taking it to the skies. There's stage two. I chose the Ranger um, from Boomerang uh, RC as the first turbine aircraft that I would do because it had such a large flight envelope, meaning that it can fly very fast if you want it to and have a lot of stability doing so, but it can also fly very slow. Um, and uh, you're able to really feel the sensitivity of this aircraft when it starts getting slow and you can actually really even tell when it's about to stall. Um, as far as a first aircraft or first jet, yeah, I'd recommend the Ranger. I think that uh, it is forgiving enough um, that uh, somebody just getting into that level of the hobby would be happy with its performance. Now, not to say that it doesn't have some characteristics that can get you in trouble. When I got up there and I started doing some slow flight, which you always want to do with your models, when you actually start flying your airplanes, you don't always want to just go fast, you want to bring it on the back side of the power curve and see how it feels on the sticks and, and understand how it's going to perform. When I did that with the Ranger, um, I got it to full aerodynamic stall, meaning the wings stopped flying. And when that happens, it did want to tip off to one side. Now that's not a real big deal when you're talking about a foam model or you're talking about a light model, but when you're talking about a model that's about 35 pounds, when it stalls off to one side or the other, it's going to be fairly dramatic and it's going to take more time to rebuild airspeed to get out of that full aerodynamic stall. So I would say that uh, the Ranger is a great entry level RC jet with a caveat. You still need to have some experience and you still need to have uh, the ability to fly at that level prior to getting in to a turbine aircraft. So a 
another thing we have to be cognizant of in flying the turbine aircraft is these have a specific maintenance schedule we have to follow. Most are the same, but specifically for King Tech, every 25 hours you have to send the engine in to King Tech to get overhauled. It costed around $300 to do so, and it's mandatory to maintain your uh, AMA insurance. If you look here, you'll see that it actually keeps our total cycles and time on the engine to overhaul right there on the GSU. So we know that this aircraft has flown 12 times for a total of 71 minutes. So it's important that we keep that in mind, um, that uh, there's not only additional model cost, there's also maintenance costs that involve flying the turbines as well. So this particular aircraft, this uh, although it's from Boomerang RC, it's uh, the, the Ranger turbine as we discussed, I actually had it professionally built from me from Chris Barton over at Full Throttle RC. Full Throttle RC is based out of Fredericksburg, Virginia, and he's a master builder. He knows he's been doing this a very long time. He used to be a sponsored pilot himself back in the day, and uh, he was able to go ahead and, and get this done for me. Since it's my first jet, I wanted to see uh, how to do everything and how it's, uh, how it's supposed to be laid out inside the model professionally. And I gotta tell you, if you take a look, Nick, come over here and take a look. You'll see that everything is just perfect. Uh, he actually cuts his own servo leads and runs his own wires and adds his connectors so that they're not just a whole bunch of bunched up wire tied off somewhere. Um, he actually uh, dust coated the inside here with epoxy to keep it uh, nice from uh, contamination if it gets a little wet, because this of course is diesel fuel. Everything has been laid out uh, professionally and, and of course the model reacts um, like it should because of that. I can't thank uh, Chris enough. Um, you can look him up on uh, uh, Facebook under Full Throttle RC. Chris is spelled with a K, K-R-I-S. Don't forget Chris Barton, Full Throttle RC. He can hook you up with one of these just like me. And thank goodness for Full Throttle RC. So I'm really the, the tech of us two. I build most of the airplanes, I do a lot of the maintenance on them. And ever since dad said, oh, man, I want to do a jet, is I knew it was going to be out of my skill level. <laughs> and I was fairly nervous on building one because it is a whole nother level of RC, starting from foamies. Um, I'm very used to building big models like these. So this is a new Raven that I built. We're going to be doing a video on this guy later on. Raven's a carburetor is used to be in flight today, but this is a fresh build that I just did. This is what I'm used to building. And just going from that. This Raven, by the way, is from AJ Aircraft. If you haven't checked them out, well, I really recommend you do. AJ Aircraft, his whole family, his whole crew there is phenomenal. Scott, Mark, Andrew is the AJ. Uh, his mom, Linda, fantastic people. And we are so impressed with this model. Uh, we can't wait to fly it and send some video to uh, AJ and just show him how we're beating it up in the sky. And we haven't even flown it yet, and we're already impressed with it. Uh, I built a couple of these big models, and it's how well it went together was awesome. That's incredible. It, I was able to build it in four days, and I'm not a master builder, and just because I had to do so little work with it. Not going to talk too much about this bird. We're going to do a full review on it later on, uh, saying how we think how it flies and stuff like that. But so far, build quality is awesome. But going back to the jet. Um, it's very nice to see like how it's supposed to be done. I've seen a lot of builds on these big models and I was very nervous in going into this so it's awesome that he was able to find someone that's able to build them. And if you're going into your first jet, it definitely is recommended. Probably unless you're really good at building um, and you do a lot of research. Because there's very little information on these jets out there, YouTube wise or any such, on what even to do with them. How to set them up, how to wire them. So. Finding someone that can like Full Throttle RC that can actually get you your first jet if this is something that you're looking and in, getting into, uh, highly recommend getting someone to build it for you if you can.
Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If this is content that you are interested in and you'd like to see, please leave us a comment. Uh, this is our first video of hopefully many. So of all this big, uh, big aircraft stuff, so if you like to see something different or like to see us talk about certain things uh, more in-depthly, please let us know. Uh, let me know how the video turned out and things that we can improve on. Also, real quick, Nick, yeah. just want to let you know everything we talked about today is going to be down below uh, all the links you need to Full Throttle RC, to AJ Aircraft, to the Aurora system, uh, to King Tech Turbines. All of that we're going to put down in the description below um, on YouTube. Please click to subscribe. If you like our videos, send them to your friends. We'd love to get our subscription levels up so we can go ahead and do more content for you. All of us here at Hobby Extreme, especially Nick and I, we thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time at the field. See ya.